my dear friends, today's video, two parts. We have the unboxing video first, followed by my initial impressions and talking points with regards to the build, the feel and the features of this MoFi Studio Deck. There are many who love up close and personal yummy videos of new hi-fi toys being unboxed. So here it is, the first part, unboxing. After unboxing and setting it up, feeling it, operating it, I can tell that this is a quality item. I am very impressed by the build and the efforts that went into making this turntable. Let's dig in. First, the plinth. Being a turntable with a 10 inch tone arm, the plinth will naturally be bigger. Implications thus will be a bigger packaging box and a likely heavier package, which will impact shipping costs and hence the overall cost of the deck. However, MoFi seemed not to cut corners with materials, fit and finish, bestowing the print with a great build and an evenly corrugated, classy and hardy finish. The edges and corners have a continuous finish, do not look as if they will come off after just 6 months or a year like the previous deck which I have reviewed. is this very nice aluminum panel with a black anodized and brushed finish which fits very well into the plane. This aluminum panel also appears at the back to house the gold-plated RCA terminals. No use of cheap plastics, this additional use of aluminum shows pride and is part of the so-called constrained layer damping of the plinth as designed by Alan Perkins. There is also an angular cut on the top of this panel, lending some aesthetics and style. The bottom of the plinth is also very well sculpted. All the above points lead me to think that MoFi did not do things out of convenience and effort is put in in machining the plinth and aluminum properly, giving the aesthetic lines and feel and finding the manufacturing means to secure both the plinth and aluminum panel together. The platter is substantial, 3 quarter inch thick, 
3.8 pounds and made of Delrin. It is well sculpted with the inner circle machined slightly deeper so as to accommodate the sticker label of our records and hence allow the record to couple smack on with the Delrin platter with the best surface area contact. Delrin is chosen by Alan Perkins as he feels that it is materially close to vinyl providing a good mechanical impedance match to vinyl records. The sides are thoughtfully sculpted inwards with a concavity so as to prevent the belt from being accidentally lifted off by the fingers while lifting off the record from the platter. Serious, no-nonsense use of Teflon and bronze together with steel aiming to provide quality, smooth rotational stability of the platter. Again, coming from Alan Perkins, what else can one expect but the tone arm with all the adjustability you need? Besides the rudimentary adjustability for tracking force and anti-skating, it allows for adjustment for tone arm base height and hence VTA, SRA and even azimuth. The latter two are adjusted at these two points with two differently sized Allen keys. Mofi supplies both these Allen keys in nice little cardboard tubes. Very well done and shows quite in execution. It measures 10 inches, the shaft made of aluminium, and said to utilize high quality ball bearings in a gimbal design for lower friction and quieter operation. Q lever system looks good, works superbly. Very well engineered and rivals the class leading Q lever from Rieger. Just like Rieger's one, there is this assured feel, there is no free play, and there's this steady descent, unlike many of their rivals under $1,000. I want to applaud too the nice chrome surround accent around the rubber support. Very tastefully done by Mofi. The dust cover shows pride too, with the male and female parts of the hinge system having alternate sculpted accents that combine very nicely in a final fit and aesthetic finish. Also, the plastic used feels to be of good quality. And the design spots angled sloped sides instead of just having a squared design. Good quality, gold-plated RCA terminus at the rear. Gentlemen, the feet are designed by HRS and look at them, pliable, and one can actually press them in and they will rebound back. They look the part in isolating this turntable from rack and ground vibrations. And even more, these feet are adjustable for height so that you can easily level the turntable if your flooring or rack is not level. Overall design, there is this sculpted exterior with the dust cover closed, sporting an angled slant outwards from the top to the middle and inwards from the middle to the bottom. Naturally bigger in size than its rivals with 9 inch tone arms, having a black plinth with a dark tinted dust cover, it reminds me of Darth Vader and looks authoritative. With the dust cover open and lifted off, the turntable looks very beautiful and classy to me with black and yellow accents. In this time and age where there are a lot of Me Too models, cost-cutting models inundating the market, we would have yet another deck with plain MDF plinth, lightweight, no brushed aluminum block, 90 degrees to everything with no aesthetic angles, no aesthetic style lines. But here, MoFi made sure that they do not come up with a Me Too model, conveniently or lazily engineered model, OEM-made turntable, and jump on the vinyl revival bandwagon. 
they enlisted the input of Alan Perkins in turntable design and science, the input of HRS in isolation mechanics, and the manufacturing expertise of ex Wadia boss John Schaffer directing manufacturing and assembly in-house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I see great effort here by MoFi. Dear friends, thank you for your time. The auditions are ongoing and soon I'll be completing the sound quality review of this MoFi Studio Deck with comparison and shootouts versus the Riga P3. We shall see if the big, black, authoritative looking Darth Vader can beat the white, zen-like Obi-Wan Kenobi. See you friends and buddies!